So, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to this Thursday sharing of Harmonize to Energize. My name is Terry Matthews. It's been my pleasure and privilege to share aspects of the art of Jin Shin Jitsu for the last five years, live and online. And I called it Harmonize to Energize. Welcome to all of you and anyone who's absolutely brand new. Um, Jin Shin Jitsu is an art of harmonizing life energy or chi or prana, depending on your culture, as it moves through energy pathways in our body. The theory is similar to um, acupuncture, Chinese medicine, uh, although with acupuncturists, they adjust the flow of their energy, the, the, uh, they adjust the flow of the energy through the body, not their energy. Uh, by tweaking points with needles. In Jin Shin Jitsu, we use our hands, the palms of our hands, our fingers, our thumbs, the back of our hands. And we place them on what we call, or what Mary Burmeister, the um, creator or the teacher, master teacher of Jin Shin Jitsu, called safety energy locks. They are the diameter of your palm, of your hand, and you place them on these energy locks but two at a time and in between these energy locks are are the energy pathways and by placing your hands on them the safety energy locks you're moving the energy so that it connects sending the message of congruence and harmony um, due to our thinking speaking and acting that harmony becomes disharmonized and so with Jin Shin Jitsu, we're lucky that we can just place our hands on the energy locks and reharmonize them. So there's 26 of these safety energy locks, left and right of the spine, three in the arm. They've all got special functions and they all work together in different ways according to the different flows that are available to learn if you study the art of Jin Shin Jitsu. And as I mentioned, um, the master teacher um, was Mary Eno Burmeister. And she brought Jin Shin Jitsu to the West after studying with her master, Jiro Marai, back in the early um, 70s. And uh, it's grown massively since then around the world. And people from all walks of life are practicing it both as practitioners in other words, seeing clientele and offering them Jin Shin Jitsu, and also as um, a self-help discipline. In fact, I would say that Jin Shin Jitsu has probably got more self-help flows, techniques, if you like, than any other energetic modality I personally have come across. Okay, enough of all that. Um, it's my great pleasure today to introduce to everyone, some of you may know her, but if you don't, today's special guest, mystery presenter, is Debbie, Debbie Rappaport from Oregon, right? Um, what, is it Thai Guard in Oregon? Yeah, no, it's Talent, Oregon. Talent. Oh, I don't know where I get the Thai Guard from. Debbie. Welcome. Do, do you want me on the screen at the same time or do, can I disappear? You can just disappear. Okay, good. Waving the magic wand. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, today is the 29th, which is a nine. And it means um, uh, end of a cycle and beginning anew. And um, and every it's like every end is the seed of a new beginning, and this is a new beginning for me, and I'm really excited and happy to be here and share. And um, and going with Terry's uh program, the 36 conscious breaths, I'm going to make sure that we accomplish that task, uh, with increments four increments of nine breaths, which will help me settle in and continue my story so um and just to tell you about the breathing i keep it very simple when my clients come in i just tell them all i want them to do is to breathe exhaling down the front from the top of the head to 
the toes and inhaling from the bottom of the feet up the back to the top of the head. So with every exhale and inhale, they create that circle breath of life around them. So when we stop and hold for a conscious nine, inhaling and exhaling, um, you can simply focus on that circle breath of life nine times. And I'm, I'm going to ask that we all do that breathing in silence so we can all settle in and take advantage of this hour together. Sit back and, and keep your hands on a safety energy lock or a finger or a shoulder um, because this is the art of getting to know and help ourselves as self-help. We can take it with us wherever we go. And, and um, it, that's the beauty of it. And the older we get, the longer it takes to take care of us. So um, some of you know me, my name is Debbie Rappaport and I live in a beautiful little town in Southern Oregon, not quite 6,000 people. And I'm a, a licensed massage therapist practicing Jin Shin Jitsu. And I'm also an organizer of in-person classes at a community center that's just like one house away. And um, it's a beautiful setting. And I'm also an online, online class organizer. So I'm here to share my testimony of a journey that led me to my first basic class and beyond. And it's, um, it's a testament of innate wisdom and going with the flow and ahas on this never ending path. So now we're going to uh, just begin with our first set of nine conscious breaths. And um, we're gonna start with a thumb and you can hold either thumb. As some of you know, the thumb is uh, the leader of the parade. Um, it's also uh, harmonizes the nine. It's for our spleen and our stomach, gets rid of all our worries. So let's just all join together and exhale, let go. And inhale and revive. Eight more times. And you can all keep holding and close your eyes if you like while I speak. On um, June 19th of 2009, I, um, I heard 
about Jinshin Jitsu for the first time. And um, this is this is the experience that led me to hear those words of Jinshin Jitsu. My mom's husband was in assisted uh, uh, facility and on hospice. And he, I had been going there every day for about a month, uh, feeding him breakfast. And on June 19th, 2009, I walked in and there was no more breakfast to be fed. The nurse came in and she checked his pulses and she said, 64 over nothing. She goes, it won't be long now. And so I called the family in and my brother shows up with six of his seven children. My mom shows up and goes over and sits on his left side and is holding his left wrist. And an aunt shows up and we're all surrounded by him because we're thinking he's going to pass anytime because the hospice nurse said it won't be long now. And um, so we're all tired of standing. We all sit down and an hour goes by and she checks his pulses and it still says 64 over nothing. And um, she's just sitting there perplexed and looking in her notebook and a little while more goes by and all of a sudden I just stood up and I went over to the right side of the bed and I placed my hand on the uh, area between this belly button and the pubic bone and I my eyes were open and I announced to everybody in the room some people believe this is where all life enters and exits the body and then I closed my eyes and I placed my left hand under his body in the area below my right hand. So around what we call safety energy lock, low two on the backside. And I, I didn't know any of that. I was just holding. And I held for several minutes. And um, then the next move I made was the right hand went to the base of the rib cage and the left hand slid under sandwiching at what we know now is safety energy lock 23 area in the center. And I was holding that for a little bit. And then I went up to the 13 with the right hand and the left hand went sandwiching around the nine area, which I didn't know was the nine. And then a little while later, I went up to the, the base of the clavicle with the right hand and my back hand went to the thoracic vertebra one area also known as safety energy lock 11 area is in the center and all of a sudden i started bawling my eyes and <laughs> and i had no emotion it was just it wasn't me that was crying i felt it was it was coming through me and i was bawling and crying and tears were falling on him and um and I my eyes were still closed and then after I stopped crying I don't know how long it was uh I kept my right hand at the 22s and then I moved my hands to the back of the, the base of the head which we now know are the the fours and so just saying this doesn't put any weight on the profoundness, the oddness, the the change it put in my whole being, the way I see the world changed from this next thing. Um, so I've just placed my hands on the, the base of his skull and almost immediately I felt his spirit leave through my hands and my eyes were still closed and all of a sudden my mom says his heart his pulse just stopped and then the nurse comes up behind me and grabs his right wrist and 
checks his heart or checks his whatever she was doing and and then she pronounced him deceased and i opened my eyes and i backed up from the, the bed and the social worker comes and to me and gives me a hug and tells me oh what a great job you did and the nurse gives me a hug and says well what a great job you did and I went to the bathroom and I washed my face and washed my hands and my arms and I went out to the courtyard and I made one phone call. I told only one person what I experienced. And this person, after hearing this story, said to me, you need to take a Jin Shin Jitsu class. And that was the first time I ever heard about Jin Shin Jitsu. And so life went on. And um, I think it's almost time to do another hole. Let me check my notes here. Ah, so now we're gonna do our second set of nine breaths. Take a break. And I think it'd be good to hold the ring finger, but you can choose any finger you want. And so we're just gonna hold our, whatever we're holding with love and exhale and let it all go down exhale get rid of what we don't need and then inhaling up the back reviving strengthening gaining wisdom growth exhaling Inhaling up the back seven more times. You can continue to hold while I continue my story. So we're going to fast forward now to February of 2010, which happened to be the second time I heard about Jin Shin Jitsu. It was on my birthday, and it happened to be my 59, 54th birthday, which happens to be a nine. A lot of nines going on. I was giving the given the book a touching goodbye. The gentle use of Jin Shin Jitsu acupressure at times of critical illness and death. This was given to me by that person, the only person that I shared my experience with on that day of the 19th of June of 2009. And so I started reading this book and I got to page 63 and I read, I gently slid my hand, my right hand behind his head and held his left number four. 
My left hand went to his left outer ankle, number 16. When I connected these two SELs, and then I turned to page 64, and I got giant chill bumps. I immediately felt the spirit leave the feet and go out the top of the body, whoosh. And I'm getting chill bumps again. So then I went ran on further and I got to page 119 and it starts talking about self-help and um, holding the fingers. And so a couple nights later, it was cold and I thought, oh, I'm sitting in my chair. I think I'll give this finger thing a go. And so I started with my right hand and my thumb and I held for about mm, maybe five minutes and I started feeling the pulsing. And then I moved to my index finger five minutes go by and the pulsing started and then my middle finger same about five more minutes and the pulsing came by and then I went to my ring finger and the second I wrapped my fingers around my ring finger <laughs> I was bawling my eyes out I mean I was <laughs> I'm I couldn't believe I was doing that and I I I I, I bawled my eyes out and, and cried out loud for 20 minutes. I, and I kept thinking, oh, what's going on here? And this made me a believer. And this made me stop what I was doing, go to the computer and look up Jin Shin Jitsu class. So let's see where we're at now. So on June 16th of 2010, I walked into my very first five-day basic class at Mount Shasta with Muriel Carlton as the instructor. And the room was filled with like, it, it seemed like over 150 people. And everybody was smiling. <laughs> and I, I said to myself, what is everybody smiling about? And um, because I'd never had a Jinshin session, all I did was hold my hands and my fingers and I cried. So I was a newbie. All the newbies sat to the right of the stage towards the front. And I was in the second row with other newbies. And Mur Muriel came out on stage and she started talking and, um, as she was talking, I kept getting goosebumps. Um, and um, once in a while, she'd mention the word depths. And then um, I was asking my people next to me, do you know what a depth is? No, I don't. And I go, oh, I wonder what a depth is. And she would say it again and again. So I started raising my hand, raising my hand. And I had, you know, no concept of the fact that if she answered my question, there was 149 other people that wanted a question answered. You know how this art is. So um, anyway, but I kept raising my hand and putting it down and then she'd say depth again and I'd raise my hand. And so I don't know how long, maybe a couple hours later, you know, when I would raise my hand again and she, she looks at me and she goes, what? <laughs> and I said, what's a depth? And she says, I'll talk about that tomorrow. And um, so anyway, I just want to say that I'm grateful for Muriel. She, her hands got on my ones and my eights. I'm grateful for, I'm grateful that I got touched for five days in a row. And I'm grateful that I walked out of that five days, three feet off the ground, and I never looked back. But we're going to go back to this class. A few days into the class, we were at a dinner at Mount Shasta Resort Lodge in a big private room with round, we all had round tables. And um, after we ate, Muriel had a little vase, and she, she said she would like to pass this around and have people use it as a talking stick, stick essentially. And, um, you know, she'd like to hear your story about what brought you to the art. 
And um, so it started going around and people were standing up sharing their stories. And um, and then it came to our table, which happened to be the very last table. And um, somebody grabbed it and stood up and spoke. And then she set the vase down and it was like staring at me and staring at me and I kept thinking and so I I grabbed it and I stood up and I I gave an abbreviated version of my experience um, of that initial day that I heard that I needed to take a Jin Shin Jitsu class. I said, I didn't know I was holding his twos and his center 15s and up and up and up. And I didn't know. And then when I got to the 22s and the fours, I felt his spirit go through my hand. And, and that was, and I kept thinking, and that was, and I started thinking the date. And it was exactly June 19th. 2010 that I was telling the story one year exactly one year to that experience it was just amazing so now let's do our third set of nine exhale inhales so I can calm back down thank you and I'm going to hold this crease of my elbows here so and it's also good self-help if you can't reach your nines you can hold your 19s so you can just let go and be the seed of a new beginning as we are holding our authority, standing in our own authority. So exhaling down the front, letting go. Inhaling up the back. Exhaling eight more times. So you can continue to hold and breathe and I'll continue the story. Fast forward five years. I had taken several basic classes, special topic classes. I transitioned my massage practice into almost all Jinshin Jitsu clients. 
and it was uh, Thanksgiving at my brother's house. And um, one of those uh, six children now, um, my niece comes in. She was 11 at the time. And uh, in 2009, so she comes in and now 16. And I said, can you believe? And so we called him grandpa. He was, he was a grump. And we called him Grandpa Tom. And um, I said to her, can you believe it's been five years since Grandpa Tom died? And she immediately closed her eyes and she said, oh, Aunt Deborah, I will never forget that light. And she squiggled her hands like that. And I went, oh, oh my God, I had no idea that they saw the that she saw the light. I mean, I was astounded and talk about aha. So a little while later, my nephew comes in and he's now 18. He was 13 at the time. And um, I said, hey, can you believe it's been five years since Grandpa Tom died? And he did the same thing. He closed his eyes and he said, oh, Aunt Deborah, I will never forget that light. Wow. That was just amazing. I mean, so on page 26 of um, The Touch of Healing, which is also a very great book, um, it's um, these words are on page 26. Seventh depth, the life energy has condensed into the light of the creator. This step provides each of us with the spark of life that animates the body. So on April 25th, 2024, Terry and Beth Lindrum were having an H2E that I was present at, and um, they were talking about the seventh step. And, um, it was mentioned that, um, you know, the, uh, about the seventh depth light coming down as a, like an umbrella, um, over the front and back of the body. And after that talk that day, I, I just sent Terry a text and I go, you know, everybody always talks about the light coming in, the light going down. No one talks about the light going out. And I said, I have a testament to that. And then he asked me, well, would you like to be on the program? And I said, yes. So here I am. And um, so I would like to add that um, going back to that day, June 19, 2009, after we left the facility, um, my mom, she was driving, we got in the car, and she turned on the radio and my mom never turns on the radio. She turned on the radio and the words that came out were, well, I'm leaving here a better man. <laughs> and, and then she turned it up. <laughs> I mean, that was just amazing. So the song is by Clint Black. And instead of the Lord's Prayer on the back of the memorial service program, there were their lyrics to this song. And the last line, again, I'll say, the last line is, quote, yes, I'm leaving here a better man. And I, I truly believe, um, you know, I've been, I have this, and you, and you can buy this at the JSJ website. It's um, the Pulse Listening. These are for practitioners. And, you know, Mary talks about the, uh, the, the pulses because remember the nurse said, oh, it's 64 over nothing. It won't be long now. And um, so I, I never knew this. I mean, I, I, I took this, I watched this uh, and I, I really paid attention to it the last month. And she, Mary talks about the systolic and the diastolic pulse. And um, 
So the systolic pulse is the top number, which happens to be our ascending. And the diastolic, of course, is our exhaling, front of the body, descending. So he was all systolic, 64 over nothing. So he was going up and he wasn't coming back down. And I, I really think, and this is what I believe after all this, all these years and everything and all this enlightenment that I believe that he was stuck and he needed to say something to my mom because, you know, she was devastated. She didn't want him to go. She didn't want him to quit dialysis, but he had had enough. And, and so I was there and I believe that when I was holding here in those tears, that was him kind of releasing going, it's okay. I know that my message is going to be shared. And um, I believe turning on that radio and hearing those words was a message to let my mom know he was leaving here a better man. And so, and, um, you know, um, can we just do our last set of nine exhale and inhale and you can chose, choose holding your palms together or giving a self self hug and to be total and complete just exhaling down the front we know the drill letting go being in this moment this breath being in the smile inhaling And I have a quote to share with you by Joseph Campbell. The privilege of a lifetime is being who you are. Thank you. You can come back now, Terry. To find myself.
<laughs> Where am I? Who am I? I see you. Oh, here I am. Here. Okay, good. Okay. Well, um, thank you, uh, Debbie. Um, you know, uh, I always look forward to all the different guests that we have. There's always um, something that, you know, I learn. Um, and often I'm moved into a space of like stillness, which is what I like to be in anyway. And uh, this presentation has certainly done that. Um, I remember mentioning to Debbie that um, I could relate to the idea of the pulses being mainly ascending because I myself had worked on someone many moons ago. And um, I, you know, I, I was still exploring. I, I'm, I see myself as a, you know, eternal student of this art. But I was listening to this um, client's pulses and she she was unwell and there was an expectation that maybe she would be leaving soon. And I listened to her pulses two or three days before she passed, not knowing that she was going to pass. And I remember saying to a colleague, that was interesting, all these, all her pulses were ascending. And then afterwards when she um, transitioned, it just made so much sense. The soul was ready to move out. I, I was curious there, Debbie, um, correct me if I'm wrong, did you say um, the author of A Touching Goodbye said they were holding the left four and the opposite 16? Uh, was, was that what they were doing? It, it was both the same side. It was the left 16 and the left four. So they were on. No. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. And maybe this is because I haven't explored that book or this transitional effect of the movement through the four by the 16. I, I can see, of course, the 16 is an ascending safety energy lock and up to the four is two. Um, but I was curious about it being the left side. I was thinking, oh, that's interesting. Well, yeah. I, I don't think there's any right or wrong, you know, at that stage. I think. Um, yeah. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of stories in here uh, about right. thing, but that was the one that really struck me because uh, it was like a whoosh, and and you know, I I mean, just saying it, I mean, it, you had to be there, you had to have your hand there and to experience it to to understand. So you know, um, there 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 are some quotes that I I wanted to share I didn't know I wasn't uh, uh, aware of any time but it, can I share a couple quotes from what Mary says because I see we have time are you okay with no, that no no you're not allowed <laughs> please please yeah yeah, yeah go right ahead <laughs> okay so uh, yeah. so in in the front of the book um uh, you know page four yeah uh Lynn oh. Fluger, Lynn Fluger writes um and uh, at the conclusion of one of her classes, Mary made the following statement. Thank you. And in unconditional cosmic love, I leave you physically and I am with you all eternally as one. May each of you discover the teacher within and be the fun. Yeah, I know that's an incredibly potent quote. Yes. And uh, I, <laughs> I'm not even going to go to see if I could even fathom where Mary was when she said that. Um, but well, it's. I, I think she was just leaving the class, you know, the class in so she's not going to be there physically. But, you know, it's a very potent quote, you know. Yeah. No, I mean, I. The Mary I mean, that I knew, it would have been quite possible that she would have slipped into that dimension anyway. I mean, I, I honestly thought at times she was a veritable Buddha, um, so it wouldn't have surprised me, but it's a very potent um, quote. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to tone it down a little bit with a couple more. Oh, go on then. Okay, so on page nine, I you know, there's so many quotes, so I just picked one, and 
you know, for everybody to know that on page nine, she lists, be my own testimony. That's very simple. And it's amazing. You know, when you first hear those words, when you take your first class, you're going, what does that mean? <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're in it and you've been doing it for a while and you're going, wow, I can be my own testimony. It's great. Uh, and then on page 10, it's uh, just stay in the now and be the, in the center. All will follow. Just be and the answer will come. And, you know, when I was there in that room at the 19th of June in 2009, I I I don't know. I, w I wasn't really I was just being in the center and I was. I was. I don't know, I was being pushed or guided or whatever, but I, I wasn't I, I wasn't in charge. So um, I was just in the flow of things. I just caught up in the flow of the moment and doing what I was supposed to be doing. And so it was, it's just great to be able to keep learning from that experience that led me to the art. You know, it's, it's magical. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great, great story or... <clears throat> A developed story that as you moved from that experience so um i wonder if there's anyone um who's with us wants to ask debbie anything or i could go into gallery view so we can see who's here let's have a quick look to do to do oh look at you there's only about three or four of you <laughs> we can see uh -huh. Uh, who, who else is there? Okay. So do any of you have any comments? Any? Ah, Lisa, is that you saying you want to speak? Hello. Speak. Um, yes, <laughs> I love your story, Debbie. I've never heard it. And to me, it just is such a strong confirmation that Jin Shin Jitsu is an innate art. And one of my favorite things has always been going to the zoo and watching the animals do it. <laughs> I've also seen babies in utero on the ultrasound doing it m many times, but you were so tuned in, even though you didn't know Jin Shin Jitsu, you, you just knew in that moment what to do. It was just there. It is the art of the creator, mm -hmm. the gift that we can harmonize ourselves and others with our, our hands. And you were tuned in um, to, to, um, what did you call him, Grandpa? <laughs> Your stepfather. <laughs> and um, you were able to give him this beautiful gift. I just love that story. It's, it's really wonderful. Thank you for sharing it. I'm glad I could. Thank you. Monica? Hi, Debbie. First of all, thank you. It was wonderful to see you and to hear you. You came to Morriston. One, once or twice, and I don't know if it is a self-help class or study group. And you, it was a great, it was a great experience. And then you disappeared. You know, I, I have to tell you, Monica, I, I don't know, maybe I showed up and I didn't know I was there, but I have never been to Morristown. You came to Morristown for, uh, with uh, John Mispar recruited you. Mm -hmm. No, I never been, but I don't know. There must be someone else that looks like me. Because there's another Debbie Rappaport. Did you well, live at the show at one I, time? I, I never been to Morristown ever. So yeah. So I'm gonna have right. to find out who that other Debbie Rappaport is. <laughs> <laughs> du, 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 du. It's just great to see you and thank you for sharing all the wonderful wisdom. You're very welcome. Okay, anybody else would like to? Ah, Colleen, can we see you or do you not have a camera? Yeah, I don't have a camera. Okay. Yeah, but I just wanted to thank you, Debbie, for um, sharing that story. That was great. Um, I haven't heard um, a lot of people who've had like a metaphysical um, connection in learning um, about Jin Jin. Um, I learned about it through a dream. And so um, for me, it was also kind of a magical experience. And yeah, so it's great to hear. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm, thank you. Pauline, a dream. 
I, I, that sounds interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Can you get a camera? We'll have you on. I'd like to hear <laughs> about the dream. Yeah. <laughs> um, when I move my computer, um, things kind of go wacky, but um, I can try it. Hold on. I'll see. Oh, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I was just I was just musing that maybe if that camera works eventually, you could come on and present one week. You know, I'm I'm always on the, the grab out. For anyone there. <laughs> that's, oh, hold on. Well, that's, ah, yeah. I have a ferry boat behind me. Yeah, that works really well. We can see you. Yeah. yeah, and and if anyone's got a story just like what Debbie presented today, please volunteer. We'd love to hear it. There are there are people in the community that may go, oh, that's <laughs> interesting. I can make a connection. Um so yeah, don't be shy. Yeah. Um, so do you want to... yeah. Okay. So I can tell you what happened. Um, I was going. Oh to... no! Save it for the presentation. <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, you can't get away with that. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you summarize it in two words, I'll give you two words. You'll start of a ten. Here you go. <laughs> now, yeah, I mean. Would you be happy to come and do a presentation? That's the fairest way to say it. Yeah, yeah, we could talk about it. Yeah. yeah. But if you want to summarize quickly your experience and relate it to what Debbie had, fine, go ahead. Uh -huh. Oh, well, I, I had a dream that a friend had a book that I should read and before I went to Mexico. So I called that friend and um, she didn't have a book about Mexico, but she had one called The Mayan Factor. Oh, and in that book were the words Jinshin Jitsu. Oh, and my body kind of tingled. And for me, that's a sign to pay attention. And so then the story continued from there. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, at least to me. I'm hearing from a lot of friends from different parts of the world. I mean, when I came to America, I mean, a lot of terms were not, I wasn't familiar with, but you know, I eventually heard that the the goosebump factor, you know, um, <clears throat> and I I always used to think that was like yeah I got goosebumps in England when I was like yeah a little cold occasionally, but I began to realize that that was a signal for a lot of people that something felt really authentic is that right, or something was you know pointing out to them something that they maybe need to look at. Yeah, for me, it's um, to pay attention to um, either do some research or to watch and see if more goosebump moments show up. Yeah, basically yeah. pay attention. Yeah. yeah, a tingle factor. <laughs> right. Lisa, Lisa, come back. So I was just thinking about the more years that you use your jumper cables, the more miraculous stories happen and miracles. And not every day, but they happen and i was thinking about um i have my own story that maybe i'll i'll share at some point someday but um i'm think i've been organizing the classes in san diego for several decades and um i remember one particular story and this woman became a dear friend of mine the day before the jinshin jitsu class she was in a bookstore um maybe a used bookstore and a book fell down from a high shelf and hit her in the head <laughs> and it was the touch of healing <laughs> she picked it up and looked at it and got the phone number and she thought she just got that feeling she needed to study it and her class was starting the next day she was here in town so you know um as one elderly lady told me my first day of my first class chin chin jitsu is divinely guided and I don't know if Mary said that, but it has definitely been my experience. Yeah, sure. I, I like those stories when the book falls off the shelf and, and hits you on the head or something. Yeah. <laughs> and then you realize, oh, yeah, this might be important. This might be valuable. I'm glad you mentioned um, San Diego because that brings me into um, – discussing what's coming ahead folks and i'm going to share the screen in a minute those of you that um enjoy wayne hackett i know i think i mentioned it last week but anyway i'll mention it again 
he's coming both to uh, San Diego and San Antonio in August. Um, <clears throat> I think San Antonio is August the 2nd to the 4th, and San Diego, August the 9th to the 11th, is that right? That's right. Yeah. Um, as you're here, why don't you tell everybody about what's happening in San Diego? <laughs> so Wayne is coming for a three-day class in San Diego, um, August 9, 10, and 11, as Terry just um, described. And I will um, I will read you just, just a description, the short description of the class. Um, it's going to be a wonderful class. So it's called 33 Mysterious Vertebrae. They're contributions to health and happiness. And it just the description of the class is this interactive three-day class will examine the spine's 33 vertebrae and their functions. The relationship of these amazing bones to numbers, depths, fingers, planets, and astrological signs will be studied. In addition to lecture and open conversation, students will receive morning and afternoon sessions each day for a total of six sessions per student during the class. Please join us on this journey of discovery. So it should be a lot of fun. Wayne's coming back after six years. So Lisa, do you want to pop in the details in the chat room there? I've just opened it up. You know, uh, get a contact sure. you. You're, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I will then share the screen and read off what's happening in San Antonio. Here it is, um, what's happening in San Antonio, August the 2nd to the 4th. Um, there's all the details and where it's going to be and who's hosting. Can you all see that? If you want to see that, the contact is Susan Galveo. Uh, five six two eight nine six eight one six five. Maybe I should uh, put that in the chat room um, if I can remember it. I'll also try to include my PDF um, in the chat. Oh, okay. If if you give me a minute to pull it. Um. Yeah. Type my phone number. <laughs> yes. Yes. And um, Wayne is starting a series. I think there's, is there five or seven study groups? I think he, it's seven. Yeah. Where he's going to be sharing the wisdom or treasures that he learned when he worked with, excuse me, when he learned from Mary. And he, he did know Mary a lot longer than certainly I and possibly many of you here, um, being one of the earliest instructors, the senior instructor. He's very close to Mary, and uh, I don't have the information right in front of me, but um, if anyone wants that information, I can forward an email, and so you can just um, write to me at h2e, harmonize to energize, uh, h2e energize at gmail.com, and I can send you that information. In the meantime... Terry, do, do I see that um, flyer next underneath? Um, oh yeah, of, of of yours, yes. Yes. I just wanted to um write down before I put it in the chat room Susan's information. Oh. And then I'll um yeah, I'll let everybody see that. Yeah, that's the proof that I have actually been um advertising it for you. <laughs> well, I mean I'm not sure like I, I need to um access it on this computer and I um, I'm trying to figure out the quickest way. Oh, uh, well, it's all right. I'll go into it. Okay. Um, one second. Um, as you can see, folks, I was very prepared for this part of the presentation. Not. Um, <laughs> okay. Here it is. 33 mysterious vertebrae. Yeah. Can you all see that? Do -do -do -do. Let's turn it into the slideshow. There it is, the interactive three-day class. 
And then we need to go to the next part, which tells you a bit about Wayne and then tells you a bit about Lisa and um, Linda, who's going to co-organize. Oh, and then we went back. Oh, never mind. I don't know what it is with me and slideshows. <laughs> was that helpful, Lisa? Yes, thank you. I was trying to um, drag the PDF into the chat, but it, it doesn't seem to be working. So yeah. Um, yeah. if anyone wants to contact me, um, or I'll also put my email, I will send you, I will send this to you, um, put my email in the chat. And I'll put in Susan Galveo's information. And um, Debbie, because I know you do a lot of organizing for the instructors, is there anything coming up you want to tell people about? Yeah, in uh, September, last weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, here in Talent, Jill is having an awesome three-day class, pulse listening, body reading, and all hands-on at our wonderful facility and our amazing little town if you want any more information you can send me an email and i have my email address right here okay that it's debbie at calmtouch.com and if you want to learn any self-help or if you want to see flyers of classes that talent will be offering you can go to my website which is calmtouch.com hmm. okay there so, we go so lots I of information I put, I put the um sorry to interrupt i put the um flyer in the chat oh yes yes and beneath that i've put susan galveo's telephone number and email for the san antonio wayne gig so to speak so, yeah, there'll be a replay of today, which um, I shall put up within 24 to 48 hours. So if anyone you know missed this presentation, um, let them know. Um, it'll be on um, Facebook and also the site where the, um, the videos are stored, Soul to Soul Healing. So um, thank you again, Debbie. Um, that was a terrific um, presentation, rendered me still, which is unusual, um, but I really appreciated that. And um, come back again and treat us to any further insights that you may have. And again, to anybody else that's um, itching to present, just drop me a line, h 2 energize at gmail. Dot com. I think you all know that by now, but if you don't, I can put it in quickly. Any last words from anyone? All gone quiet. Well, thank you everyone for um, joining us and uh, it's always a delight to have a, a different presenter every other week. Um, in two weeks from now, three weeks from now, two weeks from now, um, Manjita Tulsi will be back um, with myself and we'll continue the discussion of page two, textbook two, where we look at the Jinchin Jitsu lifestyle. And we're going to continue with the climate and we're going to cover the last three elements that we didn't cover before when we talked about dryness and dampness last week. So if you're interested in a weather report or how the weather can affect you, um, we're going to look at that and offer some ideas to help you harmonize any condition that may have been caused in some kind of way by the season, um, wind, heat, and um, what's the other one? Oh, it's gone. Never mind. <laughs> uh, it's too hot here. My brain's fried. But there, there are three um, other conditions that we're going to be looking at. Oh, wait a minute. 
I do have do have something here. Oh, why didn't I think of that? Wind, heat, and cold. There you are. <laughs> Logical, really. <laughs> or at least I thought so. All right, everybody, enough of me. And thank you once more, Debbie. Thank you for joining us. It was a pleasure. And um, thank you, Lisa. And have a good rest of the day, everyone, uh, rest of the weekend, whatever you're going to do. Um, and until two weeks' time, be well. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, everyone. And I'm now going to stop the recording if I can find the... Oh, man. You know what? All of a sudden, it's not showing... Oh, yes, it is. It's... it's an... They've redesigned it.